Pickle YouTube playlists. Today I'm going to do a lesson uh, on SFAR 73 to part 61, which is uh, informally known as uh, awareness training. Uh, the training is given prior to your very first introduction flight or prior to manipulating the flight controls in the Robinson R-22 or R-44 helicopter for the very first time. Uh, an exception to this required training uh, is if you have taken the Robinson safety course, factory safety course, uh, after, uh, I forget what the exact date is, but after 1994, if you've done that, then you can go to an FAA pilot examiner and get a sign off in your logbook in lieu of, re in lieu of receiving this training. Uh, all right, first thing we're gonna talk about is low G hazard. So, feeling of low G is that of being in a quickly dropping elevator or going over the hump in a uh, roller coaster. Oh, I can't see that. <laughs> so as you go over a hill and start dropping downwards, that uh, light in your stomach feeling is low G or zero G. Uh, and there's a few different problems with that when we're talking about flying. Uh, the R-22 or R-44 helicopters because of the design of the uh, rotor system. So one of the things that can cause uh, that feeling of weightlessness and low G is what's called a cyclic pushover, which is where you push the, well, I'm going to work off the assumption that, uh, that you guys have some knowledge of flight controls in the helicopter. Maybe I'll describe that in another video for you, for you guys. Um, so low G pushover is where you abruptly and suddenly push the cyclic forward uh, and because the fuselage of the helicopter is actually free hanging below the rotor system uh, it will no longer be free hanging if you make this cyclic pushover too abrupt which can result in next issue mass bumping and rotor separation. Uh, that is basically where the inside of the inside of the rudder head actually will make sudden contact with the rudder mast and it can actually break loose if it hits violently enough. Uh, next point we have here is how to correct for low G. So one of the things that can occur uh, during low G is the helicopter will actually, let's see, I'll use this as a demo. Uh, that works. So if you suddenly push the cyclic forward, the nose of the helicopter will tend to go down and it will actually start uh, a roll off to the right, and just like that. Wind will actually start impacting on the right side of the helicopter and that will actually get the whole thing rolling and that's part of what results in mass bumping and possible rotor separation. To correct, to correct for low G, you would actually apply a gentle aft cyclic and then correct for the uncommanded roll of the helicopter because if you do it in the opposite, uh, I guess in the opposite order, you could actually induce mass bumping because when you're moving the flight controls, you're not actually directly controlling the fuselage of the helicopter you're really controlling the rotor system and the airfoils of the aircraft. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is rotor RPM decay, low rotor RPM, and blade stall. All right, so the typical operating range for uh, rotor RPM on the Robinson helicopters, I believe is 101 to 104% is the normal range. Anything below 101% is considered low rotor RPM. A few causes for the low rotor RPM is uh, raising the collective and trying to use more power than the engine can provide. Which the only way for that to end is to uh, increase drag on the rotor blades and pull the rotor RPM down as you increase collective. All right, so you can cause it by raising the collective too quickly, especially uh, when you don't have the available engine power. Uh, another cause is you can be gripping the throttle a bit too tightly so you don't let the, uh, the helicopter automatically feather the throttle for you and keep it in the correct position. You can also have it caused by engine or drive system failures. 
uh, while operating at high density altitudes where your engine perhaps might just not have the, uh, the required power in order to maintain uh, rotor RPM. So as rotor RPM decreases, let's say you drop from 100% rotor RPM down to 90%, you will actually have a 10% increased, uh, or I guess your engine power is decreased by the same 10%. Uh, and as your rotor blade RPM is decreasing, you will have to further increase the amount of collective to maintain lift, which in turn increases the amount of drag, which in turn pulls the engine RPM down even further. And it's a bit of a vicious cycle. All right, so during normal flight where the rotor blades are producing lift, you have air meeting the, the leading edge of the rotor blade, rotor blade splitting off some of it going above, some of it going below, and then re-meeting at the trailing edge of the blade. However, when you've reached your critical angle of attack, air will start impacting the blade at too steep of an angle, and it will start causing vortexes off the top of the blade instead of that nice smooth laminar flow that uh, allows for lift to be produced. Next point, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about how the descent angle, how steep this, is it supposed to be on this side? Yeah, where you can be. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about how a steep descent angle, descent meaning you're perhaps making an approach to landing. If you descend, uh, or the faster you descend, I suppose, the easier you're actually going to reach your critical angle of attack, especially with low rotor RPM. As you slow down, the angle of attack, meaning the angle that the uh, that the uh, air is impacting the blade, that angle is increasing as the blade slows down, and or you descend at a faster rate. Uh, blade stall, which is where, well, it's like I explained here, uh, that uh, will stall at about 80% RPM, 80% rotor RPM at sea level, and that will actually increase by approximately 1% per 1,000 uh, foot increase in altitude. So if you climbed up another 5,000 feet above sea level, your rotor blades would actually stall at 85% indicated. The uh, recovery for uh, low rotor RPM is actually to apply a gentle aft cyclic, lower collective, and gently roll on throttle, doing all three of those simultaneously. Uh, all right, one last point. Uh, Robinson Helicopter has installed a stall warning horn for the rotor system to give the pilot a uh, somewhat advanced warning on when the rotor systems are going to stall. So they said typically 80% stall around sea level uh, and they have the warning horn sent to go off at 97% RPM. It gives you a good 17% reaction time. All right, last thing up, we we'll talk about energy management. Uh, so for helicopters, we have a chart that actually tells us uh, the safest combination of forward airspeed as well as, or safest combination of forward speed and altitude uh, in the case of an engine failure or drive system failure. Uh, generally, generally, you don't want to be flying too, uh, too slowly, too close to the ground, uh, unless you're nearly touching the ground, i.e. in a hover. We're going to talk a little bit about why that is here. So, let's say, all right, let's say you're flying along uh, a couple hundred feet off the ground and your engine or your drive system fails. First step would be to lower the collective and get the uh, helicopter established in a proper auto rotation. Uh, as you start descending, 
You're going to be using your first uh, form of energy to keep your rotor blades running, which is potential, or also known as your altitude above ground level. Uh, as you start descending, that, uh, that source of energy is actually draining, and the next available source of energy that you're going to be using to maintain RPM is kinetic energy uh, or airspeed, it's the same thing. As you get uh, approximately 40 feet above the ground, you're going to start a cyclic flare to convert some of your kinetic energy and your airspeed into the last form of energy that you have available called inertia, which is blade rotor or uh, rotor RPM. <clears throat> Just prior to making contact with the ground, you would level the helicopter out using the flight controls and raise the collective, which would use up the last bit of stored energy that you have in your rotor blades and hopefully allow for a relatively cushy landing. I guess one thing that's probably worth mentioning here is that an auto rotation is where you're essentially flying a helicopter uh, without the use of the engine power whatsoever. Uh, it's pretty much the upward flare, upward flow of uh, air through the rotor blades that sort of have a windmilling effect and keep the blades actually operating at full RPM if you manage the helicopter correctly. Even if you have a power failure at you know thousands of feet off the ground, you can still keep the energy uh, in there all the way until you reach the ground and you can actually land without the use of the engine at all. All right, I think that's it. All right, see you next time, guys. Bye.